Since Leon and I have been hanging out together for over a year now, I've got a pretty good idea of what he's going to do in a situation, or most situations, and he probably has an idea of what I'm going to do. I like to test him though from time to time to see how consistent he is. If the things he does are just random events, or if they're what he does, and are his thoughts and his plan. When I put this big scallop shell in, I'm pretty sure what he's going to do is he's going to analyze it for a few seconds, see if it has any good food on it, and then he's going to haul it off to the dishwasher or the junk pile. He doesn't like junk or trash just laying around his area. Leon likes certain things in certain places, or everything in its place. Are you like that? The glass shrimp are doing great. Three seem to still be carrying eggs. Look at the eggs this girl is carrying with her on her daily routine, searching for food. This is probably one of the males. Notice the parts moving around inside. Yeah, sometimes when I come to the aquarium, Leon seems aggressive and lunges at me. I'm still not sure exactly why. It could be that I'm not using the voice commands that I normally use, and I'm not sure what his vision picks up. I don't know if he always sees me as me. I'll have to study that more. And like I mentioned in an earlier video, there are days when I come to the aquarium and he's like a little puppy, and he comes running over to the glass to greet me. It could be the way the light is in the room on any particular day, and it could be his mood on any particular day. I know I can be a little grumpy some days, particularly if it's been gray and gloomy for a few days in a row, or maybe early in the morning before I've had coffee. Maybe Leon is the same way. Here, for some reason, he felt his food might be a trap or attacking him. Maybe a flashback. He definitely is in a social mood most days. He comes right over to the tank when I walk up, more often than he lunges at me. He'll also scrape the aquarium walls and eat the algae and biofilm growing on the glass. Food tends to make me happy, or happier. Food tends to make Leon happy or excited too. Some days, though, he doesn't really care for what I offer him. More on that in just a bit. Speaking of food and happiness, we tried HelloFresh for the first time about three months ago, and the term delicious convenience immediately came to mind. Our meals for the next few days just arrived. Let's see what's inside. Each meal comes with detailed instructions. The food comes packed in a nice insulated box, basically like a shipping cooler. The vegetables and other ingredients are here at the top. Then the meats are stored at the bottom between two ice packs. 
HelloFresh offers 35 weekly recipes, and you can choose calorie smart, carb smart recipes, all vegan, or even customized select meals. Obviously, Leon and I both love the salmon dish. HelloFresh Market also makes game time snacks and sweets easy. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code BRANDWOOD21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. One thing that I noticed quickly with HelloFresh is it's opened my mind to so many fun and enjoyable new meals. I've tended to eat the same boring things over and over again. HelloFresh has made me a better cook too. This is absolutely delicious convenience. You just order from the website and a box with your meals almost magically appears at your door. Super convenient. And you don't have to get out. It's less expensive than the grocery store. There's very little waste and it's quite a bit cheaper than carry out. These days, convenience and less expensive both work well for me. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code BRANDWOOD21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. Leon seems to be even more active and more full of life in this new larger aquarium. I tend to be a little analytical and a little skeptical, so I'm not sure exactly why he is. I've only had him for just over a year now, so I don't fully understand his yearly cycles yet. So I'm curious if it has more to do with the cooler water, cooler temperatures, or if it has more to do with the amount of space and the new friends, and his overall mood because of it. Right now his water is 59 degrees Fahrenheit. We've had an unusual cold snap here, so everything's a bit colder, or frozen. Both koi ponds are frozen over. You can see the koi swimming around under the ice. Meanwhile, the goldfish aquarium sits at a toasty 76 degrees Fahrenheit. There's also a placo in here, so this aquarium stays heated. I offered Leon this nice whole shelled oyster as a treat. <laughs> it didn't go so well. He smells the oyster and comes to check it out. I love how he tiptoes over the rocks. He has no problem with taking the difficult route. He grabs it up, takes a few bites. and then decides it's not for him. This is from a container of whole oysters in a plastic can from the refrigerated seafood section of the grocery store. He's like, nah, I don't think so, man. What else you got? Yeah, yeah, I know some viewers typing a lewd comment right now. Leon's a little irritated his dinner wasn't what he expected. A glass shrimp decides the oyster shouldn't go to waste though, or not. I can't leave something this large and mushy in the aquarium very long. Leon says, yeah, get it out of here. Wait, what's this big blue thing on my turf? This is exactly why I have to check the shells often. Sometimes he doesn't want to eat all of his lunch, so he'll bury it in the sand, and obviously that's not a good thing because it'll just sit there and rot. So I'll usually give him a day or so to go back and eat it. If he doesn't go back and get it, I'll take it out so it doesn't mess up his aquarium water. Ammonia, bad bacterial blooms, and pH crashes are all bad possibilities from rotting debris. Apologies to some viewers for my language in the recent Stolen Bikes video. Some harsh language can be really therapeutic though. I never use language like that in front of Leon. He's, he's probably heard worse on a fishing boat though, or definitely in the grocery store.
The CAT integration is coming along. Not as smoothly or as fast as I was hoping, but coming along. The smallest female cats have been pitching the biggest attitudes and wanting to fight. Rue, Halen, and Abby. Reminds me of some of the skinny southern little redneck girls I grew up with. Tiny in stature, big on attitude. They would get off the school bus and just start fighting in the middle of the road in my old neighborhood. As you cat people know, a new box in the house is an exciting thing. I'll let them destroy this one for a few days before it goes off to recycle. A lot of people ask how or why would you have 11 cats in one house? Well, they're rescues first. And with modern technology, modern cat boxes, modern litter, it's no problem at all. It actually is quite enjoyable. And it's fun to just run into them napping in odd places around the house. When Bobby was an only cat at the Woods house, she used to chew up my laptop cables and USB cables. She stopped when Baxter and Abby came to live with her for some reason. Now that she's moved to this house, she's chewing my cables again. So I put these decoy cables and some rope on my desk in hopes that she'll chew on those rather than my USB cords. If you have any good cat info, please share it with us here in the comments. I think Leon has dreams and goals of catching one of these glass shrimp one day. They're definitely keeping him entertained. I haven't seen the tiny crabs at all since the last update I posted. I've been looking through the coral, but I did see this little cave at the very bottom, and I suspect one of them is living in here. So I dropped some sinking food pellets in to see if it would come out to eat. As soon as I dropped the pellets in though, Leon could smell them and came scurrying over the wall looking for the food he was smelling. I'm sure this is exactly why the tiny crabs stay hidden all the time. This glass shrimp finds a pellet in the middle of the chaos and pulls it up to a rock for a meal. One day, a little bit of movement on the edge of one of the oyster shells caught my eye. It looks like it might be either one of the baby crabs or an even smaller new hatchling crab. This is just one tiny example of the resilience of life. I picked up that cluster of oyster shells on the beach and intended to use it just for decoration for Leon's new aquarium. Turns out there were several tiny crabs or crab larvae hiding in them. This one is seriously tiny. Back at the Woods house, the old 55 sits vacant again, or I thought it was. I kept the seven glass shrimp and the clusters of oyster shells I found at the beach here for a few days until I moved Leon to Georgia. Now, over a month later, I'm seeing this tiny single fish, resilience of life. And even another tiny crab. This little one has amazing and unique markings. What would you name it? I pack this little one up and I'll take it back to Georgia with me. If you're like me, your hunger for adventure and exploring has to be fed. Even if it's a tiny excursion off the interstate after getting coffee. 
I've been noticing this old house for years as I drive up and down the interstate, so today I thought I would stop and take a look around. Creepy for sure, but this old house has a history, a past. I wonder what it was like in its heyday when it was a warm, safe home for some family. I acclimate the little crab to the water in Leon's aquarium and drop it in. It has a lot of places to hide here. I'll keep you updated on how it does too. The little fish is way too small to move to this aquarium. With the high flow rate here, it would end up in a sock filter really fast. Stay stealth and stay safe, little crab. While Leon eats his dinner, the glass shrimp all gather around to catch any stray crumbs. They are so much more civilized and patient than the killifish were. When Leon finishes with his shrimp, he takes a little bit of the shrimp shell that's left over and he buries it in the sand. He may come back and get this later. The top of this old coral seems to be the glass shrimp's favorite hangout place. This is a rare sight though, four of the glass shrimp on the same rock at the same time. I wish the cats got along this well. And I spot one of the other tiny crabs. Even in this aquarium, a man-made enclosed environment, this tiny crab manages to find food and make itself a living. Resilience. We all find our little place in the world and make ourselves a life. Can you spot it here in these shells? If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and share it with anyone you think might enjoy following Leon's journey. We'll check back in soon on the glass shrimp, see if any of their eggs have hatched, and see how the tiny crabs are doing.
And we'll also look at what it's like to hand feed Leon. We'll see you soon.